Thank you very much, BYU. But right now, we're not here to pick on you. We're going to go down the road and pick on your uh, your baby brother. Utah, you are good. You're actually kind of cute. Faking it till you make it is kind of a big deal. But you're still a Utah you. And let's face it, you kind of just hate us because you ain't us. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on X at All Day O State. Today, we're partially brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment matter more with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks back in bonus bets with any $5 or more winning bet. Make sure you go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. We're going to get started with a shout-out to BYU. Thank you, the number 19 Cougs. Upside-down world aside, it was all good news. Not necessarily great news if you're a Utah Ute. Not, Not that it's bad, all right? We all know that there's a lot of similarities between Oklahoma State and Utah, just like there's a lot of similarities between Kyle Whittingham and Mike Gundy. One of those similarities is um, we both can be the number 19 BYU basketball squad. That's fun. Another similarity is obviously Oklahoma State and Utah are widely viewed as two teams that could and should compete for a Big 12 title in 2024. But there's also a lot of things that separate Oklahoma State and Utah as well. Aside from the... uh, understanding that Mike Gundy and Kyle Whittingham, they both started their careers just a few months shy of each other. So they have a very comparable record. Kyle Whittingham has just a few less W's than Mike Gundy, and they have the exact same number of losses and pretty much the exact same amount of time. Now, the difference is whether you have some disdain for the history of the Big 12 or, or, or whatever, it's clear that there's a big discrepancy between the quality of the Pac-12 opponent and the quality of the Big 12 opponent. All my regulars, aka regulators out there, you know good and daggone well. We should be the king of the original hateful eight. K-State is going to pop up and be good occasionally, of course. Iowa State as well. Texas Tech, you could probably throw into that mix too. Just like Utah should at least on paper be the king of all the new booty members of the Big 12. I think BYU, obviously, can be a contributing factor. Arizona as well from time to time. And Texas Tech should be Oklahoma State's next natural rival. But we can all see this animosity between Oklahoma State and Utah starting to grow somewhat organically. But on top of that, let's, let's just kick it up a little bit of a notch. All right, so Utah. Dear baby, 8-pound, 11-ounce Utah, swinging away in your manger. This is not the Pac-12 anymore. My boo-boo baby Utes, you don't get to play a Pac-12 schedule, right? There's no more cows. There's no more Stanfords. There's no more Wazoos. And I think we can all agree there's no more overhyped and overrated UCLAs and USCs. You don't really have to worry about having games mixed in there with a built-in W. Like, just because you come from a Charmin Extra Soft conference with Charmin Extra Soft schedules doesn't mean you're going to get the Charmin Extra Soft treatment. You were one of the main leaders of the Pac-12. Congratulations. We all witnessed the epic battles between you and primarily Oregon for Pac-12 supremacy, but we all know that That was like watching a drunk monkey with football. Y'all seem to be very proud of all your Big 12 or, sorry, Pac-12 titles. (laughs) They make you feel kind of big. They make you feel kind of bad. And that's, that's cool of you to feel so big and so bad. But again, 
It's the Pac-12 that we're talking about. The same Pac-12 that couldn't get a representative in the CFP playoffs for almost seemingly forever. Your new conference, they carry a little bit of a different stick, right? And you're welcome for that. You are so good at winning a weak conference, so weak, in fact, it doesn't even exist anymore, that you could throw out what you thought about what your record could be in that conference compared to this conference. It's just time to face reality, Ute Nation, that this is a little bit of a different animal. Winning the Pac-12, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's just like winning an award for being the world's tallest midget. It's still classified as a contest. It's still classified as an accomplishment. And technically, you are, in fact, a grand prize winner. But eventually, you're going to have to show up to a real conference, put big boy panties on, and play some big boy football. This new age, Big 12, it's considerably different than what you've been experiencing. There's no built-in cupcake W sprinkled on top anymore. I do think Utah's very good. I don't know that Utah's going to be very ready for everything that this conference provides. I mean, recently, uh, Utah was proudly touting the most invited guys to the NFL draft, but I hate to be the, the bearer of, of bad news for you, but Oklahoma State's not going to be on that list. Why? Because Oklahoma State has 21 of 22 returning starters. Oklahoma State has 90% of the roster returning. That is not the same thing for Utah. Now, I know that sometimes you can argue that there's a lot of backups that went, but your backup, both backup quarterbacks, both of which that were pretty daggone good, Bryson Barnes is gone. Uh, you also got Jackson. He's gone. Your top running back who rushed for, what, 1,700 yards, he's gone. You lost some wide receivers. You lost, what, three, four corners. You lost a couple safeties. You lost at least two or three linebackers. I understand that this is more of a depth concern, but again, you're in the Big 12 now. Depth is concerning. Depth should be a concern. And for all the great stuff that Utah does, and again, I'm not saying that Utah is bad. I'm just saying this is a different animal. And all of their years in the Mountain West, all of the years in the Pac-12, you would have thought that their their wins and losses would have been considerably better than Mike Gundy in Oklahoma State. All the years in the in the Mountain West, you thought maybe they would have been able to accumulate enough W's that they would give themselves a clear distinction. But that didn't happen. I do see them climbing in all of these polls. I do see where they, they're coming in and a lot of the preseason stuff. But if you go look at some context, all right, if you look at the most ranked wins in the current playoff era, you got Bama at 54, Georgia at 37, our buddies down the road, OU at 28, LSU 26, and then Oklahoma State at 25, followed by maybe where a Utah should be is instead of an Oregon at 23. Notre Dame's tied with them at 23. Then you got TCU at 21, which ironically enough, used to also be a Mountain West level squad. Came to the Big 12, took them some time, but they were able to beat down that door and get rid of the title of, of obscurity and into legitimacy. And you know what? Utah can follow that path. Someday, you can likely get where TCU is now in a competitive conference. What about, what about teams who have won the most, uh, or at least win a New York Six Bowl in the CFP era? Once again, you, you would expect to see Utah, all the, the bravado and the braggadociousness you see out of the Utah fan base, but that's not the case. Boise State has won a New York Six Bowl game, as has uh, Iowa State, Baylor, UCF, Oklahoma State, OU, TCU, Alabama, Georgia Tech, guys, Georgia Tech, I understand Clemson, right? Houston's in there, but no, no Utah, all right? We'll continue. Most 10 win seasons since even further back than the CFP era since 2010. You had Alabama at 14. You got Clemson at 12. Ohio State at 12. OU at 11. Oregon at 9. Oklahoma State at 8. Florida State at 8. LSU at 8. Yeah, get Michigan down at 7. 
Baylor six, TCU six, UCF six, no Utah. Utah wins a lot of games, but Utah doesn't stack up the same as Oklahoma State does, right? I mean, I saw a poll the other day that it ranked the success of 2024 predicated upon recruiting. Well, Utah's naturally going to be up there. But this is a, yet another area that Oklahoma State fans have gotten used to having to, to kind of work around the edges, right? To do things that are a little bit extra to get notice. Utah's in that position. Once again, I think Utah is very talented. I think Utah should be in the Big 12 title game. But I also think that Utah is going to get a swift kick in the you-know-what just because of the depth. They did lose a lot of depth on their defense. They lost a couple massive playmakers on offense. And now you're in the Big 12. Nothing gets easier. Every single week is a dogfight. It's an all-out war. And y'all haven't had to experience that. So, again, I think you do it. But I also think you should tell a few of your fan base to chill out with this whole we're going to come in and immediately run stuff from day one nonsense. Ain't going to happen, Captain. All right. Before we get to BYU, I need to tell you, capitalize on your money-making situation. With FanDuel, you already know, you can get locked and loaded right here, right now, with new customers getting 150 bucks back in bonus bets with any $5 winning bet. All you got to do, throw down five bucks or more and get 150 bucks back in bonus bets if you win. Football season's over, but basketball season is here. Get buckets and bucks at the same daggone time with Fandle. You already know there's a wide variety of things you can bet on, whether it be same game parlays, exclusive player props, quick bets over, under, who's going to win the next possession, the next game, and the next title by going to Fandle.com slash locked on. Shoot your shot, but make sure your next shot is your best shot with Fandle. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on because FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Oh, we get a time for celebration in the sport of basketball this season. As Oklahoma State takes down number 19 BYU. See, that's another similarity that Oklahoma State and Utah faithful have is we're evidently both able to beat the number 19 BYU Cougars in the same season. Now, Utah, it's a, kind of a, a good thing for you basketball-wise because you seem to be pretty decent. Oklahoma State is not that in basketball. Okay, we're decent. Right? We, we've got some guys who can get it done, but it kind of dies down after that, right? This season has not been successful by any stretch of the imagination. Anybody who's wanted to run Mike Boynton out on the rails would be fair in doing so. Obviously, after having Doug Gottlieb on the show, it opened my eyes to a few things, right? But I still think that seven years is seven years. The problem is we're now in a slightly precarious situation where we kind of have to choose. Do you choose to save the buyout money, keep Mike Boynton, and then instead of you know spending millions on buyout, Maybe take that, reallocate it for retention of, of roster and a little bit bigger of a foothold in the NIL recruiting realm. Or do you just suffer through the rebuild, suffer through potentially losing most everybody and just start from the bottom, start from scratch and take the chances of not having any NIL? So it's either we keep Mike and try to get some NIL to back this basketball club, or we get rid of Mike, and then we have no NIL money virtually whatsoever, and then we're stuck like Chuck, but we're really, right? I'm still, I'm still a little 50-50 here because this season, seven years, the way this has gone, pretty inexcusable. But with the NIL situation, it's hard to... It's hard to beat that 
dang it, he's got to go right here, right now, no matter what drum. I still think a conversation needs to be had come April 1st, but we get to celebrate this W. When I say celebrate this W, I'm talking more along the lines of some of the players that got to come in and play. We don't get to see a lot of Jamiron Keller. Jamiron, Jamiron Keller has been a you know backup piece all year and nothing more. Yesterday was different. He plays 37 minutes, gets out 22 points. Our main man, Brendan Gibson, down low, chipped in another 21. Javon Small did a pretty good job running the show, leading the floor. We stayed out of fat trouble for the most part. We ran some half-court sets. It was decent looking. And as Doug just said, I mean, we're, we're focusing – on the free throws, we're not seeing a massive improvement, but at least the focus is at least there. And getting a top 20 W is a big deal. I almost feel bad for Utah. Oh, wait, no, I don't. I mean, BYU. Because losing Oklahoma State right now, basketball is not a good look. Just is what it is. But at least we get to celebrate. And then it gives us a little bit of a peek behind the curtains at what could this team be with some adequate, legitimate, beneficial coaching? I don't know. Maybe this was a little peek behind the curtain. or Maybe there's still more craziness yet to come. Speaking of craziness, before we get to uh, down day in daughter America, getting prepared for an event on top of getting Flight, rental cars, hotels. It's just not very fun. Game time tickets takes the guesswork out of your situation. So get hooked up today with game time tickets. It's the fast and easy way for you to buy tickets. To all sports, music, comedy, and theater that's near you. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy. For a multitude of things in your area. Yeah, you know, my favorite part is the view from the seat in the venue before you purchase. So you don't have to deal with the hanky panky of buying a seat and getting pushed in a completely other section. Game time has the deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after the event has already started. The exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With the zone deals, you pick the section and game time picks the seat for a big time savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you back 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying these tickets with game time right now. You can get $20 off your first purchase by using promo code locked on. All one word today. Download game time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. What's not guaranteed is Utah getting some stuff done in football season. Just like what's also not guaranteed is things going the way they should. Because we opened yesterday with a loss in softball. That hurt the heart a little bit. It's the way we lost. And then we followed it up with a devastating loss in baseball. Now, we covered the other day, Sam Houston State's a pretty good ball club. They won 39 games last year, went 22-8 in their conference, played in the Baton Rouge Regional, beat Tulane in a Baton Rouge Regional. They're a pretty good ball club. But they should not be winning a series with Oklahoma State. I don't think anybody expected us to sweep this series. But I don't know anybody that expected us to lose the daggone thing. The expectations for baseball are similar to some of the expectations we have in wrestling. Not quite as high, obviously, but playing in super regionals year in, year out, no matter what, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, is what baseball is about. That's why Obrate Stadium was built. Anything less than a disappointing season. Wrestling, anything less than beating top three for a national title, kind of disappointing. Guys, I don't know what 
we're going to do. Rob Walton is a legend, a gangster. We all love him. We all get it. But his ability to manage a staff has not been good for a few years now. His unwillingness to kind of buy into some of the technological advancements, it's, it's making us a liability. It's making him a liability. And if it's just a respect factor, sorry, sorry, Josh. Somebody has to tell you, you got to make some moves. Because that, that's not sufficient. It's not how you start out the season. And unfortunately, it's just like, you know, a repeat of an old movie. The way we utilize our, our pitching rotation, when we decide to pull kids, when we give guys a couple of extra batters. It's just rough. The development of the pitching staff has not been there for years. And because he's just, you know, he's one of the goats of the game, Josh Holiday seemingly feels compelled to keep him on staff. And maybe it's not just a Rob Walton problem. The inability to play small ball. Inability to close things up at the end when it matters. Women's hoops right, kind of ran into the same thing. It was a little bit of a rough, rough day yesterday in cowboy country and cow, cowgirl country. But again, upside down world, baseball loses. Softball loses. What? Women's basketball loses. Men's basketball wins. Like, what do we do it? I guess every day can't go status quo. I'd prefer softball and baseball to do their daggone jobs, which is to win. Win, 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 and win. Just like wrestling. Thankfully, wrestling is winning. Women's tennis, we love you. Men's tennis, they won. I mean... Upside down day. I don't I don't love them, but it gives us a little bit of, of time to hear to poke fun at BYU because you should not be losing Oklahoma State in basketball right now. Okay. You just shouldn't. It is what it is, but you did. And I kind of appreciate you for it. Just as much as I appreciate the banter between us and Utah. Just as much as I appreciate the fact that Utah is successful. They're not on the same playing field as Oklahoma State. They're just not quite there yet. And they lost a lot of depth pieces that should be fairly concerning. All right, y'all. But we're going to have for this right here, because we're going to have a Utah guest on top of Tatum Bell, on top of a couple more special guests next week. Stay tuned. It'll be fun. It'll be real. Wild Ute. Love you, buddy. You're on deck. All right, y'all, you know the drill. As always, I love you. God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. I am so happy you choose to be here. Like it if you like the daggone thing. Dislike it if you don't. Share, comment, subscribe. My podcasting people out there, you know the drill. You're the foundation. You're the bricks. You're the base. Hit the five stars. I'm giving five stars and leave a review later tators